In this video, I want to show you how to clean up your user interface in Audacity to get rid of some of the toolbars that you might not need, and in so doing, free up some real estate on your screen for editing and for recording. So let's get started. Hey friends, Mike Adams here with Learn Audacity. I have a screen open here just for reference. This is Audacity version 3.7.0. It's the latest version as of this recording. And I want to show you how to clean it up a little bit. I've reset the toolbars back to default. So when you first install Audacity, your copy of it should look similar to this. But there are some things on here that I, as a voice-only content creator, don't really need. And they're just taking up room. So if you find yourself in a similar situation, I want to show you how to clean it up. First, let's go up here to the View menu. Once we click on the View drop-down menu, I'm going to hover over Toolbars, and you can see that here is where you can turn off or turn on your different toolbars, depending on your preferences. Again, I click that top option to reset my toolbars so that they'll look more like yours. But let's take a look at this. First of all is the Time Signature Toolbar. Now, I don't do music. So I don't care about time signature. I don't care if it's 4-4, four, 3-4. Four, four. It doesn't matter to me because I'm not doing music. And that time signature toolbar is right down here in the bottom left corner of my interface. So let's deselect that and free up some room down there. Oops. Let's try that again. Let's deselect that and free up some room. And just like that, I was able to get rid of that toolbar. Now there's another toolbar right next to it called the snap toolbar or the snapping toolbar. Again, since I don't do music, I don't, I'm not interested in snapping to anything. I'm not that interested in timing. I don't have to time the drums to the bass or anything like that. So I don't need that snapping toolbar. So let's go back up to view again. And let's go back down to toolbars. And let's get rid of that snap toolbar, that snapping toolbar. And it's right here, second from the bottom. So by doing that, I've cleaned up that toolbar as well. Now, the next one down there on the bottom left is the Time Toolbar. Let me show you something you may or may not already know. If I hover a map, my mouse over the little handle on a toolbar, it brings up a tool tip and tells me what the name of that toolbar is. Likewise, if I come back up to a particular button on a toolbar, let's go to this one here, it'll bring up a tool tip that tells me what the function of that button is. So there's some information for you in case you didn't already know. But let's get rid of that time toolbar because, again, I don't need it. I'm just not interested in it. So let's come back up to view. And let's go to toolbars. And the time toolbar is right here. So let's deselect it. And now it's gone. Now, the next toolbar that's down there is the selection toolbar. The functionality of the selection toolbar is to let you know your cursor position. And if you select through a portion of audio, it will tell you things like the starting point, the ending point, or the middle point, or how, however you have it set up. I don't really use it anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. So let's come up again to the View menu. And let's come down to Toolbars. And the Selection Toolbar is right here. So let's deselect it. Now, the last one that I want to deselect down here is the Play at Speed Toolbar. I used to use the Play at Speed Toolbar. If you use it, you might want to keep it on there. But I don't really use it anymore. So I want to get rid of it to free up some real estate. So if I come back up to View, Toolbars once again, and I can delete or remove the Play at Speed Toolbar. And when I do, you see I freed up quite a bit of real estate. So now I have more room for my waveform to fit, or my waveforms if I'm doing multi-track. Something else that was in earlier versions of Audacity was the Device Toolbar. I don't have it turned on, but I want to show it to you. So let's come back up to View. And let's go to Toolbars, and let's select the Device Toolbar. This puts the Device Toolbar back up above near the top of my GUI. And it's here that I can select different audio devices through drop-down windows. This toolbar used to be standard in Audacity several uh, versions ago, but it's since been moved to the Audio Setup button. So if I go to the Audio Setup button, you'll see that I have here my playback device, my recording device, my recording channels, which is a lot of the same information that's in the device toolbar. Some people like the device toolbar, 
it is handy. It's handy to get to things really fast if you need to. But I want to free up some more real estate. But I wanted to show you that it's there in case you used to use it. Maybe you upgraded Audacity and you wondered where it went. Well, there it is. So you can go get it back at any time. Now I'm going to go back to the view menu and I'm going to turn that one off. If we go back to toolbars, let's turn off that device menu or that device toolbar. And let me show you a couple of more things here before I let you go. If you come up here to this gear icon and click on it, you remember that in previous versions, I think before 3.6.0, that used to be the playhead. The playhead used to be right there. And it would either be a down-facing triangle or a lock symbol if you had the playhead pinned to the middle. But now all of that's gone, but you can still pin your playhead to the center by selecting continuous scrolling. When you select continuous scrolling, it pins the playhead to the middle of your screen. And instead of moving the playhead through the waveform, it moves the waveform through the playhead. So that's how you can still get to that. Also, if your toolbar option isn't already set to minutes and seconds, you can do it here. Again, I'm not interested in beats and measures because I don't do music. But if, if yours is set to beats and measures, it's going to look something like this. Well, that's not really useful to me as a voiceover content creator. So I'm going to leave it on minutes and seconds because that's the world that I live in. Now, one more thing I want to show you. Up here in the record and playback toolbars, you can expand these simply by dragging this out. These reset when I reset the toolbars. But normally I have mine out here a little bit more so that I can get a little more granule in my view. And I also have mine set to go down to negative 84 dB. Let me show you where to set that. If you go to your preferences window, and I'm on a Mac, so my preferences window is right here, you can select the interface in the left-hand column, and then right here in the dB uh, meter range, you can set your meter range. Normally, it comes preset to a negative 60 dB, but I like to see what's going on below that. So I have mine set to a negative 84. So that's where you go to set that. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. And that's how you clean up your user interface if you have things in it that you don't want there. And again, the whole idea is to give you a little more real estate and a little more area in your waveform so that you can do your editing there. So that's all I have for you in this video. I'll let you go. And until next time, y'all take care.